Hey guys, really excited to start this new segment with you. As you might know, my girl Darren is a huge science nerd and I want to know more about science. And so we're going to be doing a segment called Simple Science where Darren is going to break down some uh, some scientific facts that we know, or maybe we don't know, in fact we don't know, in our regular day-to-day -day life, explaining, hey, why does that work that way? We're going to be talking about marijuana today. So with that said, Darren, over to you. <laughs> Thanks, Grace. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about um, how marijuana affects us at the cellular at the cellular level. Um, and I know a lot of people probably don't think about this, but when I can't sleep at night, I think about weird things like this. <laughs> um, in addition to that, we're also gonna be talking about edibles versus smoking, um, kind of the differences that you see with those and that you feel with those. Um, and also the most important question, can you pass a drug test the day after smoking weed? Um, and can you speed up that process? Yes. So um, I have smoked weed in the past. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a stoner like Grace calls herself, but do you guys smoke often? Or like what, what's like the level of smoking that, that you two do? I, I have a very <laughs> long history with smoking and I, I used to smoke a lot in high school, but I'd say in the past two years, I've cut down significantly yeah. because a lot of these things that you're bringing up actually, Darren, like what happens at the cellular level and I'm starting to worry about them as I get older. <laughs> So interestingly enough, I have uh, personally ramped up my smoking in the recent years. I think <laughs> That's complete and I opposite, like, yeah. Yeah, I've like kind of crisscrossed. Um, I probably smoke like three times a week, I would say. Okay, that's not that bad. Yeah. Like when yeah. I was at my worst, I would smoke three times every three hours. Yeah. Like it's just like the so much. I mean, I wish I could smoke more, but I have to do this damn show. Yeah. So, you know, I'm I'm kind of like a little bit opposite of you guys, I never really smoked in college. I smoked maybe once in college, didn't feel anything, so I didn't understand why everybody was doing it. And then since then, I've had one terrible experience, which I'll talk about later, where I thought I was going to die. I told my boyfriend to call an ambulance, thought I was gonna die. I thought I was gonna be the first person to overdose on marijuana. Luckily, I was not, I'm still here. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get into um, what it actually does to yourself. I'm gonna go out on a limb, was it edibles? Yes, okay. it was yeah, edibles. Knew it. Edibles are dangerous, um, and also <laughs> they're dangerous in the sense that um, it takes a while for them to take their yep. effects. So you think that you need more than you do. Um, All but right, yeah. so break it down, Darren. Yeah. So to understand how THC affects the brain, you first have to understand a system which is already in place in our body that I had no idea about, called the endocannabinoid system. And this uh, system is actually already in place to help with pain, inflammation, and stress. So your body actually makes its own cannabinoids, which I didn't know. Um, and you have to know this because THC actually um, affects this system. Um, and as you can see here, yeah, so this is a picture of all the different parts of the brain um, that THC affects. You can see um, different parts of the brain affect emotion, fear, planning, starting movement, um, information between the brain and the spinal column. Motor coordination, eating, like a ton of different stuff that so it uh, affects teach everything affect. except what, like the, the prefrontal cortex. Yeah, I don't see that. Like, yeah. There. So these are like the main. Yeah. So these are the main things that it affects. And as you can see with the effects, some kind of like ramp up the effects. You can see with emotions, fear, anxiety causes panic and paranoia. But with, um, but with like learning new information, um, it causes impaired memory. And the same with motor coordination, it causes it causes impaired coordination. Um, so yeah, again, how this works exactly is that there are um, receptors in all these different parts of the brain. And what's interesting about these receptors is that you can kind of think about them as a lock. So with locks, only certain keys can, can open that lock. Oh. Um, and what's interesting about THC is that it actually has a very similar uh, shape to the natural cannabinoid that your body already makes. So it fits in the lock. Yes, it fits in the lock. But it's it not exa it's it can't way. Be exactly the, it's not like the exact yeah, same Yeah, so it's, 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 it's not the enough. exact yeah. chemical structure, but it's similar enough so that it can essentially fool <laughs> it, your body. It picks and the lock yes, in your brain. Yes, it picks the lock and gets you high. Okay, it picks the lock and it gets you high. Uh, but again, what um, another interesting fact about cannabinoids is that normally, um, and I have a picture of two um, neurons here that hopefully will go up in a second. Right, so here you can see a presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron. And um, usually messages are sent from presynaptic to postsynaptic. But how cannabinoids work is um, the postsynaptic neuron is actually stimulated and it makes its own cannabinoids on site. It is sent back up to the presynaptic neuron, um, which then controls the postsynaptic neuron. And this is really important because it essentially oh, controls 
the postsynaptic neuron mm -hmm. and controls um, how it's affected. But with THC, it doesn't, there's no, that control is gone, right? Yeah. Um, well, because like, because your body can regulate the cannabinoids, right? Yeah, then exactly. Creates... So your body regulates okay. those, but obviously with THC, it's just flooding your system. <laughs> um, so you get, obviously, um, you know, you get that intense high, which happens in, um, if you go back to that first picture that I had, um, there is a system in our brain called the reward system pathway, and that's mm -hmm. part of the nucleus accumbens. Um, and that is where there is an increase of dopamine, and that is that euphoric high that you feel that people yeah. want when they smoke. So um, when, 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 for example, in, the, in the, the situation that Darren brought up where you took an edible and you were overwhelmed, is that because there's too, there's too much like THC and the receptors can't process it, so they just kind of freak out? So essentially with that, what's interesting is that Scientists have found that there's no sort of um, X and Y way to say, okay, if you take this much, it's going to affect you this way because everybody's genetics are different. So me personally, I know I'm naturally like a pretty calm person, um, but I also am pretty like by the book. I like to, you know, follow rules and stuff. So when I um, have, have had an edible, I had way too much because I didn't feel anything. So I ate the entire Rice Krispie treat. <laughs> like an that. idiot. Um, I ate the entire <laughs> thing. And... I think because I am just kind of a by the by the book person, I got so nervous that like people could tell that I was high. And so I was like, okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. Just pretend that I'm not high and I'm not high. So I got so paranoid and so freaked out. Luckily, I was just at home with my boyfriend and my dog. So I was like, okay, this is normal. I'm just gonna take my dog for a long walk, do my normal things that I do when I'm not high. Um, but yeah, and I, I was just so scared and so nervous, but it doesn't affect everybody the same way. So um, how does it affect you guys when you guys smoke or have an edible? Um, it was really good when I was younger. And then as I got older, it, it got pretty bad. It started giving me like depression and anxiety. And that's part of the reason why I stopped. So I don't know what's wrong with you guys. Uh, it affects me great. I have a blast. Um, <laughs> I want to hear about the, the, the thing that Darren, you teased about how if you can pass a uh, right. a, t a marijuana test the day after, uh, just before we go to break. Right. Um, okay, so quick answer is no. Hate to break <laughs> it to you, but no. And the reason is THC is a fat soluble molecule, which means it, it hides in your fat in your body. Um, so no, you cannot pass a drug test the day after smoking, I'm sorry. But it really depends on your body fat percentage, your genetics, your um, yeah. metabolism. So I know I have a pretty slow metabolism and I'm a little bit bigger, so I know it would stay in me a lot longer than it would a really, really thin person. But if you're like a yeah. skinny legend, then. Well, no. now that you're drinking Slim Fast, Grace. My, I had a buddy. Now that you're drinking Slim Fast. I had a buddy in high school who was on the swim team, super skinny, like no body fat. And he smoked a week before he had to get tested, and he just like exercised that whole week and drank a lot of liquid and sweat it all out, and mm -hmm. he passed. Yeah, that that is pretty much the uh, the only way to speed up that process. Essentially, is to get your metabolism to be working faster. So exercise, go in the sauna, sweat out all those toxins, drink a ton of water. I know there's like these detox drinks Niacin. on the market. Yeah, which essentially is like a Gatorade, which is full of like all these different vitamins and minerals. Um, which essentially just like floods your um, your kidneys and like dilutes it so much so that hopefully <laughs> they don't trace the THC. But I wouldn't try that. I, I, I wouldn't try that. I would just maybe give it a month because that's usually the longest that it takes for the THC to leave your system. Give it a month before you have a drug test. Don't smoke the day before you have a drug Luckily, test. Luckily, <laughs> we're getting hopefully closer to a point where we don't need to do drug tests as much. So. Yeah. yeah, we'll see.